Followers of this channel will know that I've been trickling out little bits and pieces of information regarding full GA102 from Quadro information I've gained access to for the past couple of weeks. And I actually have a lot more that I can now officially go public with, including some conclusions about the RTX 3080 based on what I'm seeing from the Quadro 6000 testing that is ongoing right now. But before I get into that, I do need to talk about, of course, the RTX 3090. I have, just like the RTX 3080, known the performance of the 3090 for a long time now. And frankly, most of you watching this also probably did from many other leaks that have come out regarding its performance, which is to say, I don't know, maybe a hair over 10% better than the 3080. And when we look at the official reviews, a hair over 10% better than the 3080 is right on the money. And looking at these performance numbers, I really just don't have that much to say. This feels to me like a repeat of what happened during the RTX 3080 launch, except of course, we've seen it before. So it seems even more underwhelming. It's the same thing. Nvidia over promising some level of performance that doesn't work out except for really niche and ridiculous scenarios and all at the expense of absurd power draw well the cards still of course sell out because they were never really in stock to drive up the street price on newegg for the aib models it's understandable that everyone because they've seen this before is just taking a dump on nvidia including tech tubers and people even at amd and while that may be a little shocking to people that thought this would be a bigger increase, I will defend it a little bit by pointing out that if it's, say, 11% better than a 3080, which is 31% better than a 2080 Ti, you know, you can just go 1.31 times 1.11. This is over 45% better than the 2080 Ti. It is definitely better than the uplift we saw on average from Turing over Pascal. Although I do have to point out that it's not as much better as you might think. The Titan RTX was sometimes almost 50% better than the Titan X from the Pascal generation. And so I guess what I'm saying is that it's okay for Nvidia to say that Ampere is a giant step forward. However, it is hilariously wrong to suggest this is anywhere near the greatest ever generational leap, when in my opinion, it's only a little bit better than what Turing brought us over Pascal. And this is nowhere near the 60 to 75% performance increase we saw with Pascal over Maxwell. So I don't know why NVIDIA thinks we're stupid enough to believe that this is the biggest performance increase in years. It, it just isn't. But it is better than Turing. And so I guess we should be happy about that. But this better than Turing performance increase is, of course, at the expense of excessive power draw. Power draw problems that seem to already be linked to some AIB 3080s having black screen and crashing issues. And look, I think the 3090, it's a triple slot card where anyone who gets this expensive, you know, $1,500 to $2,000 card is going to have a crazy good power supply and be able to handle it. I think the 3080 just pushes it a little too far in the power consumption department for the people who would buy a $700 card. And in fact, based on what I'm hearing about these Quadro 6000 cards, the 3080 didn't need to use too much energy, nor have VRAM constraints. I think its design had some questionable choices that I want to get to. But before I can get to that, I do need to go over my Quadro information so you see where I'm coming from. So just to confirm, the Quadro 6000 is a 48 gigabyte card with the full 84 SMs. That's 10,752 CUDA cores. And that 48 gigabytes is just standard GDR6, as I've already confirmed on Twitter. And if we go over the full pictures now, which I will show you, trying to avoid making the watermarks too annoying, I think this card is beautiful. I honestly think this is one of the coolest looking blower cards I've ever seen. And the fact that it pulls in air from both sides, I'm told it is keeping it cooled fairly effectively, just under 300 watts of power draw. I'm, I will hopefully get you guys more pictures soon, but for now, this is what I'm 
allowed to show you. But I don't just have pictures, I also have a roadmap of NVIDIA's Quadro release schedule. Now, if we look at this here, you can see that I have heavily manipulated a <laughs> chart that was already stripped of watermarks from another source. Can't be careful enough, you don't wanna ever burn any sources. But if we go over this, you can see yeah, it does seem like the Ampere replacements are using a bit more energy on average than the Turing versions of these Quadro cards. And just to be clear about what's going on here, because it's not noted, but I can say that that top card, of course, the 48 gigabyte one, is the full GA102 die with 48 gigabytes of GDR6. And then below that, the 5000, yep, 24 gigabytes, 384 bit bus again. It's basically a 384 bit version of the 3080 using substantially less energy, largely due to the fact that GDR6X is so inefficient and experimental right now. And if we go down, that there should be like the 3070 GA104. And though not noted on this roadmap, I can say that the 6000 should be launched in November with sampling and verification in October. Although of course I have access to sources in NVIDIA that have already sent me a boatload of information. Ever since that last Ampere leak cycle, I now know who my good sources are and they are really coming through for me. But if you're just a PC gamer and you're asking yourself, why do I care about this? Well, I'm glad you stuck around because there are some gaming implications from stuff I'm seeing out of that Quadro 6000 graphics card. Now, some early gaming benchmarks are being run on these cards in test houses right now. And what I'm told, although I can't share official numbers yet, is that it does outperform the 3080 by a little bit, despite using standard GDR6. And it does so for several reasons. First of all, it has the full SMs more than the 3090, but it's also boosting higher too. So these are better yields. But additionally, I think something people might miss is that 16 gigabit per second GDR6 over a 384 bit bus is actually slightly more bandwidth technically than that 10 gigabytes of GDR6X at stock settings in the 3080. That's right, more bandwidth with more efficient and let's be honest, cheaper RAM. That gets me to a major part of this video, something I just want to point out. I think something clearly went wrong in the design of the 3080. I know why you would use GDR6X for the 3090. You know, you just need to get the fastest GDR you can in that card. It is a big ferocious GPU, Titan class card or whatever. It's okay if it uses 350 watts and needs as much bandwidth as possible. But it's weird to me, legitimately, that they would have chosen to cut down the bus to just 320 bits and give it 19 gigabit per second clocks when they could have just given it 12 gigabytes of normal GDR6 and it would have had more bandwidth. And based on everything we've heard, a large part of Ampere's ridiculous power consumption is the high clock speeds of GDR6X. Guys, this would have been cheaper too. I know that normal GDR6 is about eight to $12 per gigabyte. GDR6X is at least 20% more than that. It would have been probably cheaper and more efficient to use 12 gigabytes. So why did Nvidia do this? Well, let me get this out of the way. I know there will be AMD diehards who scream segmentation and the fact that NVIDIA wants the 3080 to age badly. And while I wouldn't put it past NVIDIA to do something like that, that only makes sense if it's cheaper. The fact is using 10 gigabytes of GDR6X is undoubtedly more expensive than using 12 gigabytes of normal GDR6. So I really don't think this is forced obsolescence here. So... I think they intended to have it at 21 gigabits per second, you know, a full over 10% more bandwidth than what they were allowed to offer, which would have been more bandwidth than using normal GDR6 over a 384 bit bus. But the fact is Samsung's eight nanometer isn't just constraining the core clock speeds. I think the memory controller just saw more excessive power draw than Nvidia expected due to this outdated node. And so they were forced to go with this weird, awkward situation where they have less RAM than a cheaper, bigger buffer option and more power draw. And NVIDIA could have made the 3080 a 12 gigabyte card, enough RAM for 4K that uses only 300 watts or less or possibly just 275 watts and costs less to produce. 
I don't know what to say, guys. That's definitely true, whatever the reason is for them doing this. And so I guess that means that, yes, they can make a Titan card, as I just covered in a recent video. And I do know from sources within NVIDIA and people talking to Quadro reps that they are considering a Titan card, which would be basically a Quadro 6000 with GDR6X slapped on it instead of normal GDR6. But if that happens... I think what they'll be forced to do is clock it only up to 20 gigabit per second, which is more than the 3090, give it 48 gigabytes of RAM, and allow it to just run at about 400 watts. And yeah, that would be probably because the better yields boost a little higher than the 3090. With the extra SMs, it probably would be 5 to 10% better than the 3090 with an insane buffer that they could probably charge over $3,000 for and people would buy it, but... Man, that would use a boatload of energy. It really just feels like they should have gone with HBM for the top die and had a 103 class die that used normal GDR6. But that's not what they were able to do. But when it comes to abilities, let's talk about AMD for one second before we wrap up this video. There's a lot of misconceptions going on about there regarding GDR6X. It is not exclusive to... NVIDIA. It's an open standard. Samsung can start producing that if they want to. And I bet that makes Micron a little nervous given how much effort they put into designing it with NVIDIA. Additionally, though, I don't think RDNA 2 will be using GDR6X. It's just normal GDR6 guys. Maybe RDNA 3 will use it now that it's out there and they could design around it, but not this gem. And while I haven't gotten my big RDNA 2 kind of a roundup of what I know by now, thing out yet i've already told you guys some stuff and that hasn't changed there's a 60 cu model that is cut down i guess the only thing i would change about that is that's probably just eight gigabytes even though i know there's a 16 sample a 16 gigabyte sample of the 60 cu model floating around so yeah 60 cus with eight gigabytes and then some less cut down version with 16 gigabytes to compete pretty closely with the 3080 that's what big navi is going to be and it will use a large amount of cash, I believe, based on everything I've been told, to mitigate the need for more bandwidth that, for NVIDIA, wasted a ton of energy. Now, why do I think that they'll come close to a 3080? Well, I can't share the roadmap yet. Remember how long I waited to show some really stripped-down version of the Quadro roadmap? Well, I can't share the professional RDNA 2 roadmap yet. I can tell you guys this. AMD is directly comparing the top professional Navi 21 die to the Quadro 6000. Now, that's just professional card to professional card. So you might go, oh, that doesn't mean it's going to come close in gaming performance. But remember, the top Quadro 6000 card has 84 SMs and the 3080 only has 72. So... If they think the top Navi 21 can compete with something around a 3090 in professional tasks, and they say about, so I assume it's a little weaker, I do think a cut-down version of it is within AMD's sites. Oh, and that card they're comparing to the 3090 has a 250-watt TDP. I'll have much more to say about it in future videos. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell button, guys, so you don't miss those RDNA 2 videos coming out soon. And also share my videos if you can, and consider supporting me on Patreon if you have the extra money. It really does help, and you'll get access to exclusive ad-free podcasts every week. All right, guys, thank you for watching.